We realize that people who compliment us the most can often be the most frustrating to work with. And how do you really build a team of complementary skills by making space for the differences and the strengths? Hello and welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. We're here to help you navigate life while disrupting the status quo. Our discussions cover a number of topics relevant to everyday life. We discuss everything from relationships to entrepreneurship. We also engage in some difficult but important conversations. And now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Thank you for joining us for episode two of the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. Today we'll be discussing the four habits of every successful relationship. And our guests have done a TEDx talk on that very topic. Today we're joined by Jonathan and Andrea Taylor Cummings. Thanks for joining us today. Our pleasure. We're really looking forward to this conversation. Great to be with you guys. Thanks so much. So first thing we're curious to ask is what's the story behind the journey of the work you do to help people build better relationships. <laughs> no, there's a story. <laughs> exactly. Go all the way back to the beginning. That I one. know it takes us back, <laughs> gosh, almost maybe 30 years, over Coming 30 up, yeah. years now. But it, you like to make this first line. You want to go for your all favorite? Right, well, I, the, the line that Andrew is referring to is that she came to the UK to get her master's and she ended up getting her mister as well. That's the line. That's the <laughs> line. <she likes. laughs> so we, we met at business school and did postgraduate degrees in management studies. Uh, John went into banking. I went into management consulting. So we were both in professional services mm-hmm. careers that were really demanding, lot, you know, long hours, high pressure, lots of travel and so on. Uh, we had this wonderful opportunity to live and work in Japan and we thought we you know, connected so well. You know, this is after we've been married for, it was our first year of marriage when yeah, we went to Japan. Just the end of the first year, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was early days, pre-kids, income was good, life was good, no stress of life. And we really bonded as a couple. We worked hard during the week and the weekends was just our time. Yeah. And it was a really, really good experience away from family influences. It was just a really good time for us to bond as a couple. Really, really good. And so when we came back <laughs> to the UK a year later, we thought, everything's wonderful we're totally in love we have this uh, professional experience under our belt we have management degrees let's start a business together how hard can it be (laughs) and then it took us all of mm, (laughs) three three months months, three months months. (laughs) for the wheels to start coming off and things just started going downhill you know the easygoing loving relationship that we had became very fractious you know we were at each other the the pressure of finances was on us um it just started going downhill it became a nightmare you know everything became an instant argument and we started discovering that we really didn't know each other well in a professional context at all we had very different work styles and that started to grate very quickly well i guess we'd never really tried to achieve much together yeah we'd go out in our work worlds and go out and do stuff and then we'd come back together it was just downtime it was just chilling and being nice to each other and just just passing time together but now we're actually trying to achieve things together we found we had very different work styles different approaches different ways of doing things different desks and she had she had annoying ways of doing things (laughs) i thought (laughs) why are you doing it like this is the way to do it right this is the way no no and we both have very (laughs) strong personalities so you can just imagine the um shall we call them conversations? Yes. The arguments that we would have (laughs) nonstop in in the office. And, you know, it was a frightening time because it was such a dramatic change from the easygoing relationship we had to suddenly having to pull together to create finances for ourselves as a family, having given up two jobs and yet having all this tension in the relationship in the workplace, which followed us home as well. Really frightening. And that forced us to because of our faith, we had agreed from early on in our marriage that divorce was never going to be an easy option. You know, we weren't going to use the D D word just when things got tough. And so that forced us to look around to try to find something, anything that would help us understand what was going on and come out of it somehow. Didn't know if anything existed, didn't know if we could make it work. It felt like everything was on the line, our business, our finances and our marriage and then we came across some information didn't we yeah some some really helpful information out of the states actually so one of these video programs way back in the day but it, it really shone a light into our lives and just helped us start thinking 
about our approaches and recognizing, but for me, a big recognition was that Andrew wasn't me. She had different approaches and she wasn't doing things deliberately to annoy. She was just doing things differently. And I, I was a, um, prior to that, I was an investment banker. It was a kind of a no nonsense, just give me the results and or get out of my way kind of a person. You know, that's what bankers do. It's just all about the money. Give me the results. At least certainly back in those days of the, you know, the early 90s. And it was a recognition that she actually had strengths that I didn't have and I had strengths that she didn't have. Uh, but before that, all I could see was my strengths and I my could, weaknesses. I could see her weaknesses <laughs> and my strengths. <laughs> that was the easy, easy way of doing things. And it was only until I started recognizing, pardon me, that actually she had some strengths that I didn't have. And together, uh, when she brought what she brought and I brought what I brought, together we could actually get a beautiful result. Then I was like, oh, okay. So actually there's value in working together with this and going through the pain of this because actually the result that we get I couldn't come up with that on my own and she couldn't come, come up with it on her own. Yeah. So it really, really was the, um, the drive of working towards great teamwork that, that worked for us. I, I was just thinking of one example that comes to <laughs> mind is we had a presentation to, oh, yes, to produce for, uh, we worked in, we ran a recruitment consultancy, recruiting senior level management consultants into what was then the big five uh, management consultancies and some uh, boutique strategy houses. And we had this really big proposal to do for one of the big five clients, which meant, you know, a great income opportunity for us, a chance to deliver well and to have, you know, build our track record and so on. And I'd spent a long time after we were both in the meeting, I'd spent a long time crafting the proposal to come up with a creative approach to um, helping them meet their needs in a way that was novel, was creative what would be win-win where we would earn great money and they would get great results. And I shared that with John thinking he would just go, wow, at the ideas in there. And his response was <laughs> not that. <laughs> well, I, I, I couldn't see the ideas in there. All I could see was a mess. I, I couldn't, I mean, I looked at this thing I read and I'm like, I can't, I can't even read this thing. Cause it was the, for me, I'm, I'm a very logical structured guy. I was looking for the flow. Show me the point. Show me the, um, where is the, because on the way back from the client meeting, we'd spoken about some of the points to discuss. So I'm looking back at this thing now. So where are these points we spoke about? All I could see was a- A sea of words. A and sea no of structure. words. No yeah. structure, no flow, no- I'm Bullet like, points. I'm like, and... how can you put this in front of any client? Why are you even showing me this? This is this is kind of your initial brain dump of ideas. This is, you know, take it back and go do a proper job was, was my initial response. No, well, that's the polite version of how we actually <laughs> said it. <laughs> but that was a real- learning point for us because it, it was painful going through it we couldn't see eye to eye I was offended that he couldn't see the brilliance of the ideas in there he was offended that I'd presented something that didn't have the structures and the bullet points and the fonts all lined up and so on and I was thinking how can you be so petty and he was thinking how can you be so sloppy and it was just very critical going backwards and forwards but when we understood through the material that we'd come across, the different strengths that we bring, that I'm very ideas, I'm very creative, I'm very big picture and visionary. John's very detailed and structured and, uh, you know, really uh, amazing attention to detail in a way that I, I, just, I just don't even think some of the things that he, he will think of. When we pull that together and we gave each other what we call space and grace to shine in our own strengths and cover for each other's weaknesses, it made a huge difference to the quality of things that we produce, but also to how we learn to respect and honor each other in the relationship. So because it, it turned out there were some real gems in there, the real diamonds in the rough. And even just going back to that presentation for a moment and what she showed me, but there were diamonds in the rough and I couldn't see them. And it's almost like if you think of a, a diamond taking you straight out of the ground where it hasn't been cut, hasn't been polished, still got a whole lot of carbon on it. It's a diamond. Don't get, get me wrong. It's a diamond. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. And she realized that actually for me to see this diamond, she had to give me the polished thing. Otherwise, I couldn't see it. And she also, a big recognition for her, I guess, was also that there were other clients out there like me who weren't going to be able to see it unless you presented it in a way that made sense to them. And you also learned to not chuck the coal out. Don't get rid of that. Don't get rid of the coal. There's a diamond there. There's an absolute there's diamond, diamond there. Don't get rid of that. Yeah. And, and you know, the idea is that for me, the polishing was my skill. I was great at doing that, but actually finding those diamonds out there on my own, I could probably do it given time, but it wasn't my natural thing. It's much better at the polishing. 
So it was a recognition actually that, well, you know what? I really do have some weaknesses here and we actually complement each other very well. Yeah. So that's what really got us excited about this, uh, the work that we do. And we started sharing that with friends, family, anybody who would listen. We, we ran, um, well, we did a few um, evenings at home and we had friends around, groups of friends around. And then we got bigger than that. We started running it in, uh, well, our local church said, you know, would you guys come and run something for us? So we did some groups there. And, and, then, and for the community. For the community uh, so, well. so it we we built on what we had learned ourselves we started exploring more in the fields of uh, relationship management uh, the management theory from our backgrounds uh, around how teams work we brought that in we looked at just everything that was out there around how couples and teams can build stronger working relationships and really pull together we realized that people who compliment us the most can often be the most frustrating to work with. And how do you really build a team of complementary skills by making space for the differences and the strengths? So that was one kind of strand to the work that we were doing. But we kept building and expanding on that. We, we started originally looking at couple relationships and moved beyond that to look at what's the fundamentals, what are the key things that can help each of us take personal responsibility for how we show up in relationships and learn to do relationships well. Uh, so over the years, we've done uh, the, the workshops and weekend retreats and seminars and webinars and just constantly refining. And most, uh, most of that was evenings and weekends around the day job. Around this the day kind of job. Just our, you know, e yeah, as I said, evenings and weekends. But it's only in the last four years. Well, really... then four years ago, it was a kind of turning point for yeah. us, you know, when you hit the 50 mark and you ask yourself, you know, what's life all about and what's the legacy we're going to leave and what what are we here for? And we realized that the thing we would regret is not doing something focused and deliberate with relationship education. Our passion is to see uh, uh, learning the fundamentals about relationships become just a natural part of personal and professional development that everybody does that everybody does because we're all in relationships and around the world we're getting it wrong you know in couple relationships the breakup rate's too high 50 percent is is what the western world seems to be averaging 50 percent breakup rate workplace conflict is you know costing again around the world huge costs in terms of finances but also the stress levels that people are dealing with and mental health and being off sick so we're just not doing relationships right. So and four most, years ago. Yeah, and I guess in most places are waiting until relationships break down yeah. before they give any kind of support or help or what have you. And we're saying, guys, that, that's way too late. Just you want to be learning this stuff as early as possible in schools. I mean, one of the jumping ahead a little bit, but one of the things we did last year was set, set up a uh, charity to work with community organizations, with schools, colleges, universities, get this stuff out there as early as possible into people's hands. And ideally before they start having challenges. Yeah. Because one of the things we like to say is our recognition, our realization was that all relationships face challenges or hurdles, every single one. As long as you've got two living, breathing, thinking people <laughs> side by side in a relationship, they're going to have challenges. And um, what you want to be do is prepare for those challenges as early as possible. Because if you like a sprinter on a, on a, a track, a, a hurdle track, if you start hitting those hurdles, and you don't know how to get over them, you're just going to get frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. And a, a lot of people just say, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here. I bail out. Yeah. Um, so what we say is, look, these hurdles are, are there in relationships. Uh, you want to be prepared for these hurdles. And um, that's the way to getting smoothly down the track to, to successful relationships. Yeah. So what was it? What were we, four so years four ago, years ago we, we decided to take the jump and the bold move to set up another business uh, together focused on relationship education. So we run a consulting firm that focuses on doing workshops and building skills in the corporate world. And the charity, as John mentioned, is focused on getting the skills out into the community, whether it be through, you know, local authorities, through church communities, through schools, through universities, colleges, and so on, just to equip people upfront in learning to do learning the fundamentals of doing relationships well and then what two years ago 
uh, we had the opportunity to do the TEDx talk mm. and that really helped to crystallize the essence of what we've been talking about in, in uh, all the events that we've been running. Because when you have to condense, what was it, you know, kind of 25 years worth of experience into 15 minutes, it really focuses the mind, right? Absolutely. <laughs> what um, distilled out of that were the, the four habits that we talk about, the four habits of all successful relationships. And we're really humbled and privileged to see the impact that the TEDx talk continues to have because the, when was it last June, not June, it's about 18 months since the video has been available. Mm -hmm. And it's now over 1.7 million views and still continuing to grow at about two or 3,000 views a day, which, you know, it's not beyond just a, a pat on our back. We were hoping for 3,000 views or 5,000 views <laughs> at least. So to see it in the millions is wonderful. But what that says to us is, one, this is something that people want to be talking about, especially now. And two, the habits are resonating right the way around the world because they're so fundamental. They apply to all relationships, whether it be couple relationships, parent and child, siblings, workplace colleagues, it, it's just the fundamentals mm -hmm. of how to do relationships well. I bet you're probably going to ask, what, what are the four habits now? <laughs> <laughs> Go well, ahead. And, and yeah, the thing is too, the, the, the TED Talk was how we found you. So I'll, I'll encourage everybody to listen to the TED Talk, watch it on YouTube. It's uh, John and Andrea Taylor Cummings as a reminder. But yeah, I know we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to do the same thing and force you to really focus on those four habits. Um, <laughs> so what, what are the four habits for everybody who's with us? Well, before we jump into the four habits, a concept that's really useful to understand relationships or, or, or you know, have a different lens into understanding how to manage the quality of the relationships is the concept of the emotional bank account you want to share? Yeah, that really the, the, um, it, and, and you'll see why we do this because then you'll see where, how the four habits come alive because the, the emotional bank account is basically a mental record that we each have of every interaction we have with the people around us. I don't know if you've come across the concept before, but it's for us, we found it extremely powerful because what it means is every time you meet somebody, you set up an account with them. And then every interaction you have with that person is a positive or a negative. If it's positive, it's a deposit into that account. If it's negative, it's a, a withdrawal out of the account. And over time, the balance will shift in that account. Now, if the relationship feels good or feels great, you've got a positive balance in that account generally is how it works. And if, if you have a negative balance and the relationship doesn't feel so good, things feel scratchy, you easily irritated, and actually what happens is you can have, you'll find you can have exactly the same conversation with the same person at a different time and get a completely different response just based on where their emotional bank account is. And so what you wanna be doing in relationships is, we're, well, sorry, I should say, we're all doing things unintentionally that are upsetting people, annoying people, irritating people. Nobody goes into a relationship looking to have a miserable time, but there are things that we're doing that are causing those problems. So what you wanna be doing is stopping doing the things that are, Firstly, identifying what's causing a problem and then either minimizing those or stopping those and then on purpose doing things that actually make deposits into that account. And that's where the habits come in. So the four habits, actually two of the habits help you stop doing some of the things that you're doing unintentionally causing a problem. And the other two, actually, as it, as it turns out, habits one and two stop you or they help you minimize withdrawals or, or stop doing them. And habits three and four help you make deposits on purpose. Yeah. So that's that's why we crafted them into habits. And a lot of people, even if you see the comments on the TEDx talk, they will say, oh, good, I now know what the habits are. You know, habit number one, be, be curious, not critical, blah, 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 blah. We're saying that's interesting to know them head knowledge, but that ain't it. You've got to take them from head knowledge into heart knowledge and make them habits. They've got to be, it's got to be part of who you show up as on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. It's got to be part of your to-be list. And everybody focuses on their to-do list, but we say, okay, your to-be list, what kind of person are you? How do you turn up? And that's where the habits uh, come in. Yeah, so it's about how you're experienced in your one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, especially the people you love and care about and becoming conscious of how what you're doing is landing with people, minimizing the withdrawals and on purpose doing things that will be like deposits in their emotional bank account. So habit number one, be curious, not critical, is all about taking the time to really understand 
differences rather than to go with our natural reaction, which is to criticize, to judge, to tell them they're wrong, we're right, because that's just the world we all live in. It's about taking the time to understand their difference and the strength that's hidden, the, you know, treasure hunt for the strength that's hidden in their difference. And that's what we needed to learn to do when we worked together the first time, you know, all those years ago. Uh, because that helps us overcome the frustrations that come with unmet expectations, which we're basically projecting onto people to be us. They're not us. Uh, we learned that we shouldn't try to be each other, but we must let each other be. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So habit one really is about, it's about self-awareness, improving that, but also other awareness. It's about building understanding of people and how they behave and what causes them to do the things that they do generally the things we're not we're not so bothered about the things that work well for us we're more bothered about the things that don't work that so annoy well. us. and that's <laughs> where the problems come in and start making withdrawals out of the emotional bank account so yeah. habit one is about getting better at just understanding why they do what they do and actually saying ah, you know what it's okay for them to do that that's okay that doesn't bother me anymore yeah let them go with that they don't need to be me and in habit two be careful not crushing recognizes that listen conflict is inevitable we're different there will be times that we don't see eye to eye but it's all about learning the principles and the techniques of being able to manage conflict well, to, to turn up better to a conflict situation, to you know, take responsibility for your own behaviors in, in a conflict situation. But more than that, to learn to treat each other well so that you come out of the conflict strengthening the relationship rather than damaging the relationship and yet most of us uh, conflict is something conflict resolution skills we tend not to learn we tend to turn up in our natural personality style which is all very me centered and we end up crushing each other in one way or the other um ra and damaging relationships rather than strengthening it so habit two is um the, the, and all these habits the focus is on changing behaviors from habits that damage relationships to habits that strengthen them. So underpinning each of the habits, you have principles, tools, and techniques that we talk about in the workshops to help you develop new skills, which then become new behaviors when practiced over time. So the habit really becomes a part of your character, a part, a part of how you're experiencing mm. relationships in particular. Say, just, just to put that in context very quickly in, in habit number two, a lot of the way that we, we turn up in conflict is driven, as Andrew said in passing earlier, it's driven by who we are as a person. We have our different personality types, uh, styles tend to mean that we either want to win in conflict or get out of there or talk about it or give in or the things that we do, but they're all, as Andrew said, they're all very me-centered. And being me-centered in a relationship is not a, is, it never works. It's not, it's not a, a, a road to long-term success. You've got to find a win-win solution, which is very much us-centered. Yeah. And so the, the habit really is about saying, okay, well, how do we, if that's how we turn up in, in a conflict situation, and usually in conflict when the pressure is on, that's when the, the raw part of us comes out, you know, the real inner part of us comes out, and that's the bit that can cause problems in relationships. So it's about how do you put control around that? How do you pre-program your brain to work in a different way so that when you when you when the the pressure is on you're up against the wall whatever you, are, you would like to describe it how do you make sure that the right you shows up in that situation yeah. and there are ways to behave and and it's it's about i guess it's about um putting ground rules in place knowing how to control your anger there are lots of things that you can do lots of practical things to do yeah. to be ready for the the battle we call it there's a battle that's going to happen you want to prepare for the battle like a boxer going into a ring in the in the ring you want to fight fair and then afterwards you want to take time to restore the connection and do things right and that's what habit two is about it's it's showing people in practical ways how do you do that how do you handle how do you firstly recognize how conflict's going to happen and then in the conflict how do you then handle it well so that the risk the relationship actually comes out of it stronger rather than damaged as a result yeah as you can tell there's a lot of depth that sits <laughs> uh, behind the habits sure. um and at the risk of running out of time we'll just share the other the other two really quickly so habit number three ask don't assume recognizes that we all have core values core beliefs assumptions that we live our lives based on um, deep-seated assumptions that sometimes we don't even recognize that we have them until they get challenged. And when they get challenged, our response is visceral, you know, from the gut. You stepped on a nerve that's something that goes really deep. So 
how do you have conversations around these deep seated issues in a way that you can build trust and respect in the relationship? So ask, don't assume, developing that habit involves being able to identify your own core values, create healthy boundaries around the things that are really important to you and develop the skills of having courageous conversations around them whenever you need to so that you build mutual trust and respect. And then you want to do habit four? Uh, sure, habit four, uh, connect before you correct, is about overcoming, I guess, uh, well, okay, backing up for a moment. For, uh, a lot of us as people tend to find it easier to be critical when uh, when we see, oh, like we're going back to habit one for a moment, where we see people different to us, we're, we're very critical about them. And we find it easier to correct things when things go wrong, rather than actually maintain, build and maintain strong relationships with the people around us. Quick example, if you have teenage kids or if you've ever been around young people of that kind of age, if you don't have a connection with them, trying to get them to listen to you is an impossible task. If, if you want to have a, a, if you want to have, if you want to be able to speak into people's lives, it's almost like you need to have permission to do that. And that permission is connection. So what we're saying in habit number four is if you, if you do need to correct at any point, although that's not the focus of it, the warmth in relationship comes from actually starting with a connection first. How do you build that connection in relationships? And that's it. I mean, that's an, an yeah, essentially what that's about. it. You know, it's how do you build the warmth and the emotional connection on purpose? Because we're far better and far more frequently give constructive feedback and help people know how to do things mm -hmm. better rather than be as intentional about building connection, showing value, communicating just how much they matter to you. And there's a saying that we like to use that people go where they feel welcomed, but they stay where they feel valued. So how do we on purpose make people know just how valued they are? And that's what Habit 4 is about, practical, intentional ways of communicating that value yeah. and that, and that uh, and emotional that, connection. With, with the best will in the world, that, that, that statement really lands home for me every time because with the best will in the world, people won't stick around unless they feel valued. So even, even in a domestic relationship, whether it's a work relationship or domestic, doesn't make any difference. Uh, people leave organizations. Who was it? Jeff Weiner, who did the, the, the LinkedIn CEO. He did this um, uh, survey, survey of, of mm -hmm. um, thousands of people. And they said, you know, people don't leave organizations. They typically leave bosses. It's because the bosses have made them feel valued or but somewhere down the road. You know, I'm generalizing, of course. But at some point, they just didn't feel like this was the place for them anymore. And they moved on. Somebody else made, the grass was green on the other side. Somebody else made them feel valued. And the same thing happens in, in home relationships where people, if they're missing, if they're not feeling particularly valued or appreciated or loved or warm, and somebody else starts making them feel that way, well, they didn't go looking for it, but now they're not getting it at home. They're getting this kind of affirmation for themselves outside of the home. They gravitate to that naturally. And so our job in relationships, especially home relationships, domestic relationships, is to make people around us feel valued. Yeah. Because if we don't, we leave them vulnerable and open to somebody else making them feel vulnerable. And then they start gravitating that way. And then I don't want to say we have ourselves to blame for it, but there's an element of that. Yeah. We, need, we need to look after each other in the relationship and make people want to stay in the relationship. Yeah. Do the things that you probably do in the beginning that got the relationship started. But somehow we always tend to not do it anymore. And there's a whole other conversation we could even have about how these habits apply to the, the issue of inclusion and having people feel like they belong in the workplace, for example, or in life, in communities. And that's how fundamental the four habits are, that whichever lens that you look at relationships through work, home, society, the four habits are still very relevant. And um, that we're, we're literally in the middle of doing of finishing our first book. Hopefully to, not the to, middle. Hopefully the, we're about 90 percent there. Just trying yeah. to get it out the door now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it should be back with the publishers for editing by the end of, of this week to just help capture some of these thoughts and as another way of equipping people around the globe with the fundamentals of how to do relationships well, at least as a starting point for taking personal responsibility for how we show up to relationships and for building better relational intelligence ourselves as you can tell we're still very passionate about the subject and could go on forever but we're gonna we're gonna hand back to you we're gonna leave it there just now 
Well, I, I have one question and again, it will kind of really narrow that focus, but I think the people who will be attracted to this, uh, this recording are going to be people who are either really being proactive about making their relationship better or their relationship is in a tough spot. So I want you to just kind of play a game with me here. Go back to that point where, you know, you guys were working together early on in your marriage and it was, it was that very low point where you, you were struggling with the relationship. If you could go and take all the knowledge that you have now, go back to John and Andrea at that time and you had 30 seconds to a minute, what would you tell them to help them just kind of push on it and keep going to get to where you are today? I think space and grace is the first thing. Give each other space and grace. Get curious about why the other person's doing whatever it is that might be frustrating you or creating distance and then get more knowledge, get more information because when you get uh, more insight into what's going on, you change the narrative in your head and make more space, unblock the issues in the relationship and can start having a better dialogue. What would you say? I, I would say I go back to that uh, image I gave you of the hurdler on the sprint track. Mm. I would say you can't see them now, guys, but trust me, those <laughs> hurdles are there. They're on that track, and and this is not these are not hurdles that are unique to you. Everybody faces these hurdles. Mm. Half of us aren't getting over them. If you want to get over that those hurdles and get to the end of the line, get to the end of the the finish line, you want to be prepared to get over those hurdles. And as Andrew was saying earlier, we used we used to say back in the day, get more understanding to be more understanding. Getting that understanding without understanding, we go nowhere. Yeah. Once we and once we can understand why people do what they do, why we do what we do, we've got a fighting chance of being able to to work together. It changes Absent the narrative. That it changes yeah. the narrative in your head. Absent that understanding. You're just going to be, you're going to keep getting surprised every time. And some of those surprises are not going to be pleasant surprises. Mm -hmm. And at some point you're going to bail out. You want to just build that understanding to give yourself a fair chance of getting to the end of the line, get more understanding, allows you to be more understanding. You've got a better chance of working together. Yeah, That would be my 30 seconds or probably a bit longer. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess the, the last thing is you mentioned the book. Mm-hmm. So what are, I guess uh, there's the book. Obviously we have the, the TED talk that we can go back to. Mm-hmm. What can we expect um, addition, in addition to that? What can we expect from you in the future? And what are the best ways to find you? The best way is to go to our, our website, which is the four habits.com the number four habits.com because we have workshops available. We have online courses that people can do a self-teach a module. We have Mm -hmm. uh, a mentoring program that we do for couples uh, one-on-one with them. We have one coming up this afternoon, actually, a couple that we're mentoring. Um, Just lots of resources uh, available on site. There are blogs that we've written around the issues and uh, uh, what's it called? An e-book that's available for free. Well, I mean, what we would say is you want to be proactive about your relationships and you want to make a journey, make, make a a life of, of studying yeah it, 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 we, we've we've been doing this or oh, coming up to 30 years now and we're still learning yeah absolutely. so they're, they're, we're not we're certainly not pro- pro- professing to be experts and we've got it all sorted out there, there are challenges new challenges coming every day but at least we now have the skills to address most of them in a, in a good way and that's what it's about it's about being equipped to f- as new challenges come at you i mean who, who would have thought about COVID even a, a couple of years <laughs> ago it's a new challenge life and lockdowns new challenges all the time and it's about being equipped to do that. So we would say, go on a journey, set yourself on a journey of learning yeah. as much as you can. We've kind of packaged all our 30 years of stuff into one website, and there's a whole lot of resources on there to help people in different ways. We'd love it if you come to our website, but of course, you don't have to. But but whatever you do, go out there and start learning how to improve your skills and, and developing these habits that actually make you show up as a, a good person, yeah. the kind of person that you'd want to be around on, on a constant basis. Andrew said the website is there, fourhabits.com. There's a whole lot of, of resources on there. And the book will be on there when um, when it's published, hopefully in, a, in another few weeks time. And if you want to see what we're doing on the, the charity side, that's called Soulmates Academy Foundation. Soulmates Academy was the name that we started with 20 odd years ago. So soulmatesacademyfoundation.org is that the, it will tell you about the charity work that we do. And there's a free webinar on there now about getting through relationship strain while working from home. So that could be very relevant for, uh, for, for people to, um, to check out right now. Uh, but th- th- as John said, it, the, the lifelong journey 
is a really important mindset because we invest in everything that's important to us. We invest in houses for the long term. We invest in our education, our careers. We invest in life insurance policies. Why aren't we investing in relationships when we want them to last? That And relationships are so fundamental to our personal health and well-being, as well as to the impact in the family and in society. So it's about time that we start investing in those on purpose as well. Excellent. And I know I could I could definitely talk to you guys much longer, but I know you have other commitments today. So to be respectful of that, I just want to say thank you so much for making thank the time you. to speak with us today. And I'm sure everybody, um, everybody who joined us got a lot of value out of this conversation. Wonderful. Well, all so the best to so. you in, uh, in what you're doing as well, helping to get the word out there. Thanks for listening to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. For more ways to listen, connect with us on social media. To be a guest or to partner with us, check out our link tree at Disrupt the Everyday. Join us next time for more ways to disrupt the everyday. Thank you.